And how, how'd you come on this guy? Uh, I applied for a permit through Arizona Game and Fish, and uh, I use this animal for educational purposes, like uh, filming for natural history television and uh, displaying in, uh, for the public. How was he, was he stuck or sent to a rehab center too, or how was he acquired? Uh, so this animal was, was poached and couldn't be released back to the wild because they didn't know where it came from. So this animal was collected as an adult in 1986. And if we consider that an adult Gila monster reaches maturity at about 10 years old, that makes this animal well into their 40s. Jeez, they could live 40 years? Yeah. Good. And that's the venom gland you said, that little swollen yes, area on the lower right part of the jaw right beneath the eye. Yeah. And you said that implies uh, it evolved as a defense mechanism yeah. rather than a, a hunting. Uh... Exactly. These guys eat things that uh, can't get away anyways. Uh, helpless rodents underground, uh, bird eggs, fledglings, and that beaded pattern is uh, scales, and each scale has a bone underneath it. Each scale corresponds to a bone. Yeah, it's called an osteoderm. And they only have it on the upper part of their body, and on the lower part it's smooth. And the pattern of each Gila monster is uh, unique, uh, like a fingerprint. So if you're ever out in the wild and you regularly see Gila monsters, you can photograph them and you can know if you're seeing the same individual. So if you were to assault or rob somebody and you got them on, uh, on a cam, yes, you'd be able to you know, put them in a lineup and connect the dots again. Exactly. So. Uh, connect the braille, really. This, okay. Do you hear it? Yeah. <laughs> So don't try, don't do nothing, okay? Yeah. Just be a good boy, all right? He'll be, he's, he's uh, just swallowed a whole family of quail yesterday. So. Oh, wow, how about that? Yeah. And how old do you think he is? He's at least 30, eh? At least 30, well, oh, well, well it, oh, over 30, maybe in the 40s. And how long can they live about? Uh, in captivity, the record is around 40, uh, almost 50 years. In the wild, who knows? How come reptiles always look at people so skeptically? Well, he's, he's side eyeing me. Well, because uh, they've been wanting to stop humanity for a long time. <laughs> Ready? Okay, yeah, so now, Biro, tell me what would happen if this guy bit me. If this guy bit you, uh, first of all, we'd have to get her off of you. And, oh, they don't like to let go? Well, they don't want to fall, so uh, we'd first put her on the ground so all her feet are on the ground, and then she might let go because she, she wouldn't think she would fall. But if she still didn't let go then, we would squirt her mouth with some rubbing alcohol to make her let go. Okay, and you said there was venom visible when she uh, was hissing at yeah, you Yeah, she was. It's evaporated, but uh, when they get upset, they, they salivate profusely and it's, there's venom it, in there. It happens to me sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So then what, what type of toxin is in there? Uh, this toxin, I guess, would be some sort of neurotoxin because it causes extreme pain. And um, it's not the venom directly, but the, the side effects from the pain, such as shock, decreased uh, blood pressure, and uh, some people have been known to shit their pants. Oh, really? Just from the pain? Huh? Yes. Yeah. Quite literally, lose control of their bowels. But either so, way, it's, it's definitely an ER visit and an expensive copay. Yes, because you probably provoke the bite. Uh -huh. And then, uh, but it's not going to kill you, though. You'll just wish you were dead. Okay. It's not too bad, you know. That no. happens to me sometimes anyway. Right. Stop you, man. This, she was found in a glue trap. Yes, this animal was found in a glue trap. And uh, you can still see a little bit of glue, it's kind of shiny there, but, um, you know, uh, the southwest is being populated very uh, rapidly uh, in recent times. And uh, people from all over the country are retiring here. And what that means is uh, it displaces a lot of animals. And uh, interactions with things like Gila monsters and rattlesnakes become more common. And a lot of people are just, you know, too dumb to really do anything but try to kill them. Right. Either. Fortunately, this person called me to remove her from a glue trap and he felt really bad. And he said he'll never use glue traps again. Um, the big, bigger issue is um, 
the best thing to do is relocate the animal less than a mile from where you found it. And that used to work, except now, if you do that, you're still within a suburban area, and you, the animal risks being uh, uh, stuck, in another, stuck in another glue trap or being killed uh, through ignorance. Um, so we, we really need to figure out new ways of dealing with this human-wildlife interface. Uh, yeah. They're surprisingly human-like, aren't they? It's, yeah, it's crazy. It's like, they look like little raccoon ants. So you said Actually, she's... Yeah, she's... I was just going to say that. You notice how her face is completely black? Uh -huh. Gila monsters have that, and it works two really dual ways. One, if she's going into a hole that's occupied by her food source, like a squirrel or something, they can't see her nose coming in the front door. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah. And then... So she kind of ambushes them in their burrows. Then she eats them, and then she stays there for a couple days. Oh, that's kind of nice. Yeah. And then if she gets too... If she needs to warm her body up to digest the family she just ate, all she has to do is stick her nose out from the burrow <laughs> in the sun. It's black, and that blood heats up in her nose and circulates throughout the rest of so the So she body. just sticks her little nose out the burrow hole and then it heats up real yep. quick. Yep. She gets all the heat she needs, then she goes back in. Yeah, and she's not exposing her body to predators or anything like that. So she, so you think she's about three or four? Yep. 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 Wow. And how many about how many how many uh of these are, are are born in a clutch of eggs? About five. About five of yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. This is a reptilian equivalent of a saguaro. It's, uh, it, it is a, uh, like saguaros, Gila monsters, uh, the desert tortoise, the uh, uh, Gila monster. Uh, there's a whole cohort of Sonoran desert species that um, evolved with the region. And this is, this is one of them. How do they hiss? Um, I don't know exactly. I don't know the physiological mechanism, but uh, they are really good at, at expelling a bunch of air out of their mouth. As a warning. So to be bitten by a Gila monster, you have to ignore all of the warning signs that it's giving you. <laughs> Which I'm sure happens. It does. It does. Most people um, get, that get bitten uh, ignore those things. They're drunk, mostly, and lack teeth. Uh.